Well, we're very, very lucky um, to have um, the conference ending with um, Dr. Rick Tarnas here with us today. It's such an honor to have you here, um, Rick. Um, Rick is the author of the um, incredible books, Passion of the Western Mind and um, Cosmos and Psyche. Um, and it was also um, a pleasure to um, that the AA um, awarded Rick Tarnas, the Astrological Community in Britain awarded Rick Tarnas the Charles Harvey Award this year. But Rick has been known for um, decades and his work is incredible. Um, and he also is a professor uh, in psychology and philosophy at the Institute of uh, Californian, is it? Um, sorry, Rick. Yeah, sure. Um, California okay. Institute of Integral Studies. Sorry. Very good. Very um, good. And so we're very, very lucky to have him. We really appreciate you being here, Rick. So thank you very, very much. And I shall pass it over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy, uh, for that kind introduction. And um, let me also thank you, as well as Frank, uh, for inviting me to speak here with you all today. Uh, and, uh, and for all your work in putting together um, this, uh, this conference. Um, as I said before, putting on a conference is, is an enormous uh, task and a, and, a, and a service that has so many parts and you know, so much uh, uh, improvisation and, and uh, problem solving. And I, I, having put on a few myself in my lifetime, I always feel uh, I, I want to honor those who have given us that, that service to put, put something like this on, especially astrology conferences, you're already herding cats. Um, and uh, uh, then to also have the everything online adds a whole nother <clears throat> layer of complexity. So um, my, my thanks to all of you. Uh, and thank you also all of you who are, who are listening um, to me right now. Uh, who, who I was going to say got up early this morning, but in your case uh, are, are enduring to the, that's where I am um, having uh, just gotten up, but uh, here on the West Coast of California, but you who have been um, watching many, many talks over the last two days, I, I honor your uh, endurance and willingness to take in one more here at the very end, and I, I hope I can make it worthwhile. Being uh, 70 years old now, uh, getting closer to the end of my career, uh, I thought I'd use my time with you today to, to, to share with you a few suggestions and principles that I found most useful uh, for navigating uh, the mysterious ocean that, uh, that life is uh, with the aid of astrology. Astrology is many, many, many things. It's a perspective. It's a method. It's it's a uh, it's a tool. Uh, it's a, a frame of reference. Um, it's a mode of communion with 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 the uh, great archetypal uh, forces that live within the universe and within our deep psyche. Um, and uh, like any a, a tool or idea, uh, especially one that's powerful as astrology there can be both very positive and creative, but also uh, dangerous um, potentials in how it is used. Um, and there's a, in certain ways, astrology is not just any intellectual method of understanding. It's also really a kind of form of magic in the, in the ancient sense and, uh, and the Renaissance sense. Um, and by magic, I mean, among other things, that it's a, it's a kind of miraculously direct mode of communication and interaction um, between us, between our consciousness and the, the interior soul and spirit of the cosmos that lives in us as well as all around us. And um, magic uh, is such a, can be such a gift just as science is, which is in a way a kind of magic, uh, modern science, very powerful, very perilous. Um, and it can be very problematic uh, indeed when it's not used wisely as, as the tale of the, the sorcerer's apprentice makes clear. I hear the music now of uh, Paul Dukas 
Sorcerer's Apprentice in the background. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, well, um, so I titled this talk, Creating the Future Through Understanding the Past. And I, I brought up uh, in my, my little 50 word um, description of, of the talk, I brought up that, that famous Kierkegaard um, quote that's from a passage in one of his journals. And he says, you know, life can only be understood backwards in retrospect, but it must be lived forward. And th th it, that this is something, it's such a deep uh, existential truth about human life uh, and about, uh, and it's uh, poignant. Uh, we, how often we don't really understand something deeply until it's over. Um, how often it's right, often within hours or days after a person dies who, who we knew, who we knew well, perhaps in our family uh, or friends, or, uh, but, or often a, a very well-known cultural figure that we're, that we're connected to, or that we know well. And um, when they die, it's almost as if their, their meaning blossoms to the surface and, and we see it in the, in, that's why reading obituaries uh, can be quite, um, quite a, a, a revelation as you, you kind of look out over the um, whole narrative compass of, of a person's life and see it in the whole, in the round, and kind of see the, the, the beauty of the karmic patterns. Steiner's calls karma the greatest, the greatest artist, um, and there's something to that. Um, and that's true of civilizations too, as Hegel said, you know, that, that the civilization's meaning uh, cannot really reveal itself until a civilization is close to its end, um, till, till it's dying in some way. I think, it's, I think it's as if when death happens, whether it's a, a life or a, you know, or a collective, it's, it's like the seed goes into the ground or the essence of what has been lived through that life goes into the, into the soil, into the earth, into the, the ground of our, of our collective uh, psych, psyche, um, the anima mundi, the soul of the world, and, and, uh, and becomes more accessible to us from there in a new way. Now, with astrology coming in to the picture about, you know, the fact that we, we can understand life in retrospect, um, we can understand it backwards, but it must be lived forward, a whole nother uh, set of complex meanings uh, is brought in. And, and that is because um, astrology both gives us some very, very interesting clues, windows into the future uh, because of our understanding of how those particular planetary configurations and and uh, uh, tendencies have unfolded and uh, manifested themselves in the past. But as a result of making um, a forecast, a prediction, a look towards the future with, with, a, with this astrological perspective in mind, um, every act of astrological interpretation exerts a creative influence on the future. And this gives every astrologer uh, an enormous responsibility and, and a challenge. And that's what I want to explore today. Uh, uh, the, the, the challenges, the opportunities, the, the, uh, uh, the, mm, the responsibility. The, uh, we're all explorers in this world. Um, we're always finding our way through a mystery. We're trying to see through a glass darkly. Um, and that's in part because of our, we're finite beings. We have access to infinite uh, mm, channels coming in towards us, but we're finite, things get filtered uh, uh, as they come into us and as we see uh, through that glass darkly. And um, what adds to this mystery is the fact that the future is in some fundamental sense open. Um, even though it's profoundly shaped by the past and by our present attitudes and decisions. 
so astrology, we all know, uh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm talking to a privileged audience here because there's, uh, I don't know how many of you are, are listening to me, whether, whether it's 10 or 50 or, or, or however many, but, um, or who will listen to this, but um, this is a privileged audience because we know directly how astrology allows us to access an unprecedented range of illuminating insights about virtually every area of human experience uh, and activity, every discipline, every, every part of life can be, uh, new, new light can be sh shown on, on it, uh, deeper insight. Um, now, it's most illuminate, most kind of immediately satisfying and enriching uh, an illumination when, when we are looking at what happened um, or, or what is happening, uh, what is in existence, and then we bring to this present or to the past uh, the knowledge of where the planets are uh, or were at that time and of what the specific forces and, and principles are that those uh, planetary um, bodies uh, carry uh, in those positions. Um, and a kind of magnificent music arises uh, when we have both the archetypal uh, and the concrete to work with. If you look up the birth chart of anyone you know, know well, uh, that you're really familiar with who they are, uh, or of a major historical figure that you're deeply familiar with, and you see how the planets in their birth charts and in their transits, how they came through in their lives, how the, how the, how the gods and goddesses um, sang, how, how they made music uh, in coming into their, their interaction uh, and, and brought into concrete form in this life, at that moment, in this particular location um, and situation, how these universal principles were brought into concrete form out of the uh, possible range of ways that they could have manifested. So you've got this sort of archetypal waveform, and then it concresses into the specific concrete particular of the event or of the, of the, of the, of the birth um, in, in ways that are so reflective of the archetypal dynamics that were in these waveform patterns and now have burst forth with a particular uh, form. Uh, now, if you have just the concrete person or the event, and you don't know the planetary positions, uh, what you're left with is um, what everybody else is seeing, the event, the person, uh, but you, you don't have the rich archetypal meanings and patterns uh, and interactions that are at work. And, um, uh, so, and if it's in the future that you're looking at, you have just the planetary positions, but you don't know uh, about, let's say if, if you don't know, you don't know about the event that's going to happen, or let's say you're looking at, a, at, at the chart of a person, but you've never met them, you know nothing about them, you're just looking at the chart. Then you know uh, only the abstract potentials, the abstract archetypal potentials, but without their having flowered into a particular manifestation. So it's when you have the two realms together, the, the, the concrete particular of the actual event <clears throat> or person and the, the archetypal principle, the God, the goddess, the universal <clears throat> um, form, excuse me. <clears throat> it's when you bring the two realms together that then the music happens then the magic happens. Uh, then you can see the eternals manifested in time. Then you can see the universals expressed, it, expressed in the particular. So astrology is terrific at this type of understanding um, of, of the past and of the present. It allows for the kind of knowledge that 
is similar to what a really good historian um, can, can, uh, can do uh, in looking back at history. Um, they're not predicting the future. That's not their thing, but they bring insight. They see the deeper patterns, the deeper meanings of the past. And same thing with a, with a really uh, excellent uh, cultural critic of contemporary life. They're, they're excellent at sort of reading the present, seeing the deeper levels that are going on. Um, okay, but they're, they too are not necessarily predicting the future. But of course, human beings want to know the future as well, or at least they often think they do. Um, uh, and at the very least, they want to be better prepared for the future. Uh, and they know astrology can help with that in one way or another. Uh, they, so they, they, they want astrology and astrologers to do forecasts, to, to um, be predictive. And the more specific, the better. The more concretely predictive, the better. And there's the rub, because as soon as the astrologer makes predictions of any kind, um, you, you're, uh, you, the astrologer, is, are playing a role in shaping the future. You're not just reading it uh, in this kind of disengaged, uh, objective way. You're shaping the future. And that future is partly being created out of your own soul and out of all your potentials and your filters and your traumas and your complexes and your brilliance and insights. All that's coming together that's going to shape the future, both of what you're um, reading uh, for somebody else or for an era that you might be talking to a group of people about what's happening and wh where the planets are now and in the future, um, uh, or what is um, even for yourself. You have responsibilities to yourself. You shape the future when you look at a transit and go, ah, I see I've got the, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction is going to be squaring my my Saturn all this next year or something like that. And um, what does that, what, what emotions are brought forth in you with that? Uh, how much have you integrated what the great mysteries of Saturn and Pluto are about? Are you more uh, in denial about certain things or, or so, uh, or uh, traumatized or uh, whatever that, that it fills you with fear? Or do you have a sense for the noble element and potentials of Saturn and Pluto together that you can, in knowing what's happening, be able to bring uh, the most life-enhancing possibilities out of your, your knowledge of these particular uh, planetary principles? Um, so seeing the patterns of the past um, we, we want astrology to tell us how these patterns will, may indicate what will happen in the future. Now, the problem is, particularly with the modern mindset, which has such a strong valuing of uh, precise prediction, control, kind of me me mechanistic, quantitative, uh, uh, predictive uh, certainty, all of which is so central to the technological, industrial uh, application of scientific method, going back to Fr Francis Bacon and, and, uh, and Descartes and Galileo. Um, the problem is that the modern mindset, when it gets applied to astrology, can make the fundamental error of thinking that astrology works just the same way, is, is kind of functional, basically at the level of a mechanistically understood causal, linear causal uh, uh, universe such has been kind of constructed by uh, the modern mainstream mindset. And, uh, and that astrology therefore needs to prove itself as the, if it's of any validity at all by uh, statistically measurable concrete predictions. Um, now that's another topic altogether, uh, but suffice it to say that, that this demand represents a kind of attempted uh, colonization of the, the, the subtle, the more subtle and complex intellectual power of astrology. 
a colonizing of it or an attempted colonizing of it by the assumptions and the methods of, uh, of mainstream modern natural science. I say mainstream because uh, a lot of <clears throat> uh, contemporary scientists uh, and those of the last century have really been breaking through into new paradigms, new, uh, much um, uh, more intellectually interesting, complex, multidimensional ways of, uh, of approaching the mystery of, of the natural world as well. Now, um, we all want to have as much insight as possible into the future and how best to navigate our way there. And we know that astrology can help us in this regard. Uh, and especially in times of crisis, such as ours right now, uh, people turn to astrology and they turn to the stars to help, um, help them, uh, to help orient them, to give them a frame of reference to work within. Um, I, I gave this talk uh, a couple months ago on uh, a, a talk on what's happening in the stars right now, which I, I'm not going to be talking about what's happening in the stars right now. I imagine it's come up a lot uh, in this conference um, while I've been asleep for the last, uh, for the, <laughs> the times that the conference has been going on and uh, my California nighttime. So I won't be saying more here, but what I did uh, a couple months ago and, you know, a fair number of people tend to, to see my lectures that get put on, uh, you know, YouTube recorded here and there, I, that is most of which I don't even know about. But this one was recorded uh, specifically, it's called What's Happening in the Stars Right Now by my uh, graduate school where I teach. And, um, you know, over 100,000 people watched it in the next several weeks. And that to me was such a testament to what we astrologers hold for a, a time, an era, uh, a, 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 a human community that is in such a, a critical juncture as we are in right now. And people look to astrology at a time like this to get a be, an orienting frame of reference and a ground uh, w by which they can um, make their way uh, more trustfully, more intelligently, more skillfully uh, in, into the future. It's for, you know, people go to therapy generally when they, um, when they're in a crisis, not when everything is just absolutely perfect. Um, and that crisis, the symptom, the suffering, that's, that's, that's what opens up the depths of the soul. It, what's, it's what opens up the new horizon. It's the key. Uh, and, um, that's why astrologers, when we see somebody who's come to us when they are in crisis are in a sense that in a very special moment um, in that person's life and with a very special responsibility because we can at that moment almost like uh, enter through the aperture that's been opened up by the wound, by the fear, the, the symptom, the, the crisis, uh, the crisis to the old status quo of the ego structure and, and so forth and be able to speak more deeply to what, what's happening and, and who you are and wh where, how things can unfold. And also to get a, a, a wider, deeper understanding of the mystery of the cosmos that, that we're participating in that might've been off limits with their more confident but narrow mindset when they were uh, not in crisis. So um, here's where I wanna make a, share a few suggestions and principles uh, for um, using the powerful astrological method of analysis in a way that can lessen the dangers and magnify the, the benefits. Let me see the time here, okay. Um, astrological knowledge is, is both a, a liberating privilege and it's a weighty one because the way we approach the world, our forecasts, our predictions, our assumptions about the future, uh, it's going to shape the future. Worldviews create worlds. There's a, the vision, the, the assumptions, the, the mind that we bring into uh, the engagement with the world is in a constant recursive uh, interplay with the world 
it's all one, it's one whole, and we are affecting it as it is affecting us. Um, and, and so uh, I want to um, just share a few really specific suggestions that basically point to the importance of care in astrology, care in many ways. We need to have care for our client, care for our audience, if we're speaking um, or, or, or um, writing, care for, care for ourselves, including when we're looking at our own charts and transits. Um, we have to have care for the truth, care for good scholarship and, and, and rigorous research. Um, we have to have ultimately a, a kind of care for the cosmos, which cares for us cares for us because it's why otherwise would it be just bathing the the earth and every one of our individual lives with meaning making us a a significant center a, a focus of cosmic meaning every moment in our lives our our births our individuality but the entire world this this speck of dust in the vast cosmos that is the earth is a center of cosmic meaning that's care that the universe is showing is kind of flowing uh, in our direction and that we our human consciousness has gradually awakened over thousands and really millions of years if you go to uh, you know um, pre-human uh, primate and, and animal consciousness as it's gradu gradually uh, evolving and complexifying until we're able to kind of read this, the symbolic uh, language of, of, the, of the cosmos in this way. And um, it's, 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 a, it's an incredible um, act of, of love really by the universe towards us. And in return, um, we need to bring our, our care our love for that cosmos and for the, the great gift of the astrological um, discipline, art, science. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a kind of goddess that, that, that enters into one's life uh, and, and, and graces it. Uh, and, and if we can bring a re, re, responding care for this great mystery, for what really is the, the soul of the universe, the anima mundi, um, uh, care, for, uh, care for the future, care for this un, unborn child that, that we, with which we are all pregnant. Um, now, to get the most insight from astrology and from studying the past, while not constricting or distorting uh, the future with our premature assumptions and, and predictions. Really one of the most uh, critical principles to take to heart is the idea of the, um, the multivalence of the archetypes. By that, multivalence means you know, the, the multiplicity of meanings. The, every archetype, whether it's uh, archetypal principle or astrological, uh, meaning of a planet like Saturn or, or Venus um, is uh, has a kind of iridescent variation of aspect that is all of the different variations of the way Saturn can come through or Venus can come through are faithful to the essence of the uh, of that principle of that god or goddess and at the same time and by the way I every planetary archetype has both uh, masculine and feminine forms, every single one. They may have a patriarchal name from the, from the tradition, but all of us as astrologers know very well that um, Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, the sun and moon, there's a, there's a solar feminine as well as a solar masculine. There's a lunar masculine, the caring father, the needy husband, 
or the or the uh, you know emotionally etc or the 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 solar feminine um, independent um, uh, woman of 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 will and uh, rational agency who acts in the world as, as an individual and shines you know okay every single one has so when I say gods and goddesses I'm not saying well Venus is the goddess and Saturn is the, the god yes they do have that form but that's not the only way they can come through they they each have um, full range of um, gendered uh, variation of of manifestation um, now. It's this multivalence that is so crucial uh, uh, for honoring how astrology works and uh, giving to us a new kind of creative freedom for working with it. Um, uh, astrology involves the possibility of prediction, but as a method it, on its own, apart from uh, divinatory uh, clairvoyant intuitions, on its own, just looking at where the planets are, it gives us, uh, it's a method that is archetypally predictive rather than concretely predictive in, a, in, a, in an absolute way. Um, Saturn can, in a chart, can signify difficulty uh, as well as um, discipline. It can, it can be burdens, uh, but also foundations. It can be uh, gravity in the sense of uh, weightiness, but uh, like in the physical sense, but also gravity in the moral sense, um, uh, a grave event um, or person who has personal gravitas. And, and, you, you, and you put it together with Venus, like a Venus-Saturn aspect, it may coincide with say loss of love or the end of a relationship, but it also could signify enduring fidelity in love or love that endures through great obstacles or, um, or the love of an older person, or it could be a, a, an aesthetic a pre special appreciation for classical forms of art um, uh, or a person who has a very careful attitude about uh, relationships, or it could be cold heartedness, or it could be a kind of armoring in romantic and social situations and so forth. These are different shades of the, of the Saturn spectrum and Venus spectrum that can emerge in entirely different areas of life. Um, uh, it could be in the interpersonal, it could be uh, physical, could be inner, could be outer, could be career, could be health, um, could be one's spiritual life, could be one's dreams, could be in artistic expression. All these are possible. That's the beauty of the archetypal perspective is that, is that it permeates all dimensions of, of human experience. And you can't nail down in advance just by looking at the chart, oh yeah, this is in the fifth house in Libra. Therefore, it's going to be in this dimension and specifically it's gonna come through in this way. Um, it's, uh, you may have an accurate intuition about that and um, some are some astrologers have a highly developed either clairvoyant or kind of divinatory capacity um, that is is admirable. Mm -hmm. But um, the the pure astrological information by itself is, I think, best served, and we are best served by holding in mind the greater plenitude of of these uh, uh, symbols. Um, and that requires of us a certain humility and caution as we pursue astrological understanding. Otherwise, there's a real danger of psychological wounding. You, a, a hard as this to say, as this is to say and to know, but people come away from readings feeling wounded by something that's been said, perhaps too carelessly or too uh, something that reflected too much the astrologer's uh, personal complexes, their fear of Saturn transits uh, that they, they haven't um, dealt with adequately themselves or uh, s some other way in which um, you never want to leave your client, 
or friend or yourself feeling more discouraged than you were before you had the reading. Um, it, it's, that's, that's an inadequate um, reading. It's, it's, a, it's a translation of the poem that uh, doesn't measure up to the depth of its mystery. Um, but the, the great thing is that once you have a sense for what, who these particular gods are, what they're like, what they're like in themselves and in, in interaction with each other, then we can be in a better position to participate intelligently and skillfully uh, in how they are expressed. We, we, we participate, we're participants, we're not unconscious puppets uh, of them. When we, when, because when we're unconscious of them and unconscious puppets of them, we can either too easily act them out blindly and therefore also often destructively, but we also have a tendency, natural human tendency to project them onto others, particularly the negative things, but positive things as well and not own them for ourselves. Uh, so I think of astrology as giving us the knowledge of the great chordal structures of, uh, and rhythms of the cosmic music, but it's up to us what melodies we sing um, to uh, that music, what, uh, to those chordal structures and rhythms. It's up to us what dances we dance to, to them. Um, it's true that the culture we're born into, the era that we're born into, the family, the community, all those are going to shape what, what genre the music is, whether it's jazz or reggae or, or, or classical um, or uh, Indian uh, ragas or whatever. But it's going to, um, but within, so you, you have cultural inflections of the archetypes that bring it into more concrete form. But even within that, the melody of the individual, the dance expression of the individual still has a great, uh, great pride of place. Um, we're all discoverers here. Uh, and I think what, what I'd like to do here is to just go uh, very quickly through a, a, a few, how are we doing here? Is that 10 after the hour? Wow, time flies. Uh, just to, let me just say a couple of, um, you know, very concrete uh, recommendations or principles. Um, what, uh, first, do no harm as the great, Hippocratic principle is in medicine. Same for, same for us as astrologers. Um, you know, what harm can be done uh, through an interpretation, a reading? Um, there can be a kind of sense of being imprisoned in a false fate, or you're, you're born under a bad sign, or it's too bad that, you know, uh, you're going to have this transit, uh, uh, or, um, or looking at it at a challenging transit as just being something that you have to get through and uh, uh, look carefully to see when it's over and miss the meaning, miss, miss the, uh, the great gift that it's attempting to, to, to give to us. Um, uh, the relationships never prejudge the possibility of, uh, of, a, of a relationship just by whether there's a lot of challenging aspects. Actually, how many really, really long-term flourishing marriages and friendships and relationships have you seen where there, there weren't some quite fundamental uh, hard aspects between fundamental planets in the two, in the two charts? It, it, it goes with the territory and it's part of why we've come together. And, and that's the other thing about hard aspects and soft aspects. Hard aspects, yes, they're, they can be hard. They can be challenging um, at a very essential level. But through that very quality, they can um, actually bring forth a greater sort of potency of positive uh, fulfillment of, of those energies than can happen even with a, with a, a harmonious confluent soft aspect. Um, 
I think of, uh, for those of you who are countercultural uh, psychedelic uh, folks, um, I think of, for example, um, the, the, the soft aspects, uh, trine and the sextile are, are more like, like MDMA, you know, ecstasy. Uh, you know, it definitely activates the archetypal energy, but with a general predisposition uh, towards the harmonious and the positive end of the spectrum, uh, positive affect uh, uh, of the relevant archetypal qualities. But the hard aspects, the conjunction, the opposition, the square, um, semi-square, et cetera, in the type form of sesqui square, they're, they're in a way more like um, a, a really powerful psychedelic like LSD or uh, uh, ayahuasca or something. They're more potent, more dynamic, uh, more enduring in their consequences, more transformative, uh, and with a general predisposition towards both problematic and positive forms of the archetypal complex with a real interplay between them. And that one form, the, the, the more problematic form of it can actually flow into a highly potent form of a more positive expression of it. Um, and I think all of you who are astrologers who've been doing this for a while are, have recognized that it's the hard aspects that often mark the most important uh, and valuable periods in our lives and the most valuable aspects in the charts of people whom we most admire. Um, anyway, uh, that, that's, that's why it's so important to not just get stuck in ne negative interpretations. Um, another thing is we need to be careful about uh, the impulse to, to try to uh, predict control and uh, uh, predict and control life and in a sense exploit opportunities um, through our knowledge of astrology rather than participate in it. The neurotic ego can use anything, including astrology, to, uh, to uh, obsessively micromanage life uh, and, uh, it can, and that can cut off the wider range of options for us. Um, there's also an astrologer's mm, temptation to want to seem like wise or knowing or omniscient or in, in uh, direct contact with the will of the universe. Um, and that can, um, you know, to, to be the, the high priest or priestess, you know, within the, uh, interaction and that there's that that's a shadow side of a more positive impulse um you know positively we we do want to be caring we want to protect people from hardship we want to you know there's a kind of parental or maternal uh and, and paternal uh, care that's being expressed um but you don't want to get into a position where you one are creating a persona of like the 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 all-knowing magus who who uh, really knows what's what's going to go down and telling their clients what how to how to live, and you also don't want to enable the client's neediness for such for that kind of thing um, where they through a, a a kind of positive transference. So um, we all have at least a little possibility in this direction that we that we need to be uh, conscious of. We also need to look at the astrological information and not project our fears onto that information, um, our traumas, our complexes, and then somehow create that as like, here's the neutral picture for the other person to take in. That's not fair to them. We, 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 that's why it's so important for us to do inner work, our own maybe go into therapy or an analysis or do inner journeying. Um, uh, have deep self-discernment so that you cleanse your vision of that kind of projection of your fears. Also, though, the, the projection of, of your wishes, of how you, know, how you want it to come without adequately holding the, 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 the more balanced view. Um, okay, uh, I think just... Uh, uh, Wendy, what time do we have here? It's Maybe. just on a quarter. Yes, we've got five minutes. Okay, so let's let me um, uh, let me call call it a halt right there to to my um, throwing at you one thing after another, and instead uh, let me um, 
open things up to questions from everybody. And, and uh, if anybody has a, um, yeah, maybe, maybe Wendy, you might mediate that and, and share with yes, me any please questions. Do. Type any question you want anyone in the chat box. Um, lots of comments, but do type in some questions. Uh, so, so Sally, Sally's asks, would you say that empowerment equals freedom? Yeah. So that's so important. Um, uh, when, because this kind of empowerment where you're getting a knowledge of what the, uh, deep universal powers are at work at a particular time and coming through, uh, then you have, um, this greater freedom to choose out of the spectrum of pos possible manifestations from the most uh, uh, noble potentials to the most uh, ignoble, to, from, from really profound possibilities of that, you know, let's talk about the Venus Saturn or the Saturn Pluto or, or your, your uh, Mercury Jupiter aspect, or uh, there, there can be like really life enhancing potentials there, or there you can um, have, really um, the shadow side of those things. Every, every archetype has its shadow. And so to somehow, once, once you have a sense of the spectrum, it's like if you know, if you play an instrument, if you have, you know a lot of chords, melodies, ways of moving your, 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 your fingers on the keyboard or the, um, or the, the horn or the, the, the stringed instrument, you have, a, um, you have greater freedom you're empowered to bring a wider range of music. So yes, it, and, and here's one other crucial thing. Honoring this multivalence and multidimensionality of how many diff different parts of our life that a particular uh, aspect or transit uh, could, could be coming through. That's honoring the cosmos's own ceaseless creativity the trickster archetype's always going on, and it's and that trickster archetype is is very much connected with not only our own unfolding uh, spiritually, morally, etc., uh, calling us up short when we get too full of our, ourselves, etc. The trickster is also that which brings the delight of the aesthetic uh, dimension of astrology. We can't I can't emphasize enough the beauty of of astrology. We get to see such beautiful. Um, uh, orchestrated uh, manifestations of, of the whole cosmos coming through in our lives. And uh, we honor that kind of unpredictable creativity within the universe by um, uh, recognizing the, the full range of possible uh, uh, ways in which the universe can manifest itself. And in that sense, we are honoring the universe's freedom and power, not that, that as well as our own. Thank you, Rick. Um, and Jennifer Jackson, hi, Jennifer, has asked, what are your thoughts about the current pandemic from an astrological point of view? Is there a positive spin you could help us from a generational viewpoint? Yeah, well, um, so much could be said. And I, I'll just say, if you, I gave an hour long talk on it that you really, uh, if that I could do better justice to, I, if I just directed it to you, just look up Richard Tarnas, what's happening in, in the stars right now. That's an, and, and it'll come right up. Uh, I think it's on the archetypal, it's on a couple of YouTube places, but archetypal yeah, view like is one of them. So, um, but very quickly, um, this so expresses the Saturn Pluto conjunction, of course, you know, remember 911 was, uh, was the last Saturn Pluto uh, opposition. And, uh, you know, it, it tends to bring very grave, uh, um, weighty events that uh, bring an end of an era and a kind of waking us up out of a kind of naive taking for granted of the, of the world that we're in. And, uh, and in this case, also bringing in hardship, separation, encounter with death and mortality. Um, whenever you bring Saturn and Pluto together, uh, and of course there's more going on, Jupiter's there. Mars is squaring it right now so long with that long retrograde square. So it's just grinding it in with aggressive force, um, et cetera. There's a, 
there's a real range of ways this is coming through right now every single day. But one very cr crucial th thing that I can say in one minute is that Saturn-Pluto aspects tend to bring both the, the death of things, a death contraction in a sense on a, on a collective level. Every death contraction is also a birth contraction and Saturn and Pluto together. Pluto is the great processes of dying and being born all the time. And Saturn is that moment, that guardian of the threshold where, where the ending of things happens and then the beginning of the next cycle, the beginning of the next life. Uh, and we, we are in a birth contraction as well as a death contraction. And it, it, it tends to be a period when we really have to face the shadow of things. I really see this as part of the, of the Earth's system's intervention on human affairs because looming behind um, the social and economic injustice of, of within the human sphere and looming behind the, the, the COVID um, shutdown and hardship that this is causing and, and the collective uh, uh, dying and illness, et cetera. Beyond all that, and isolation, Saturn, you know, everybody isolated in their ways, not being able to hug, not being able to be in with each other. Beyond all that, this is a, uh, there's a, there's a huge crisis, all of you are aware of, of course, of the mass extinction of species and the climate uh, uh, shift uh, that is humanly, has been humanly constellated by our civilization and our, our massive numbers and our industrial technological impact on, on the larger earth community. And this is almost like an intervention by life to wake us up to uh, uh, a different way of being. I don't think things are gonna be different. Uh, I do think things are going to be different um, after this uh, un unfolds. And, you know, we're right at the end of that long Uranus square Pluto that happened. You know, we just reached the 10 degree mark away from exact this earlier this year. That's been going on all through the, the 20 later from like all through the 2010s. And we're just starting to move into that next wave pattern of Uranus and Pluto when they move into the trine, which the whole second half of the 2020s is going to have. When that can bring uh, a more confluent energy uh, co combining you know, the Plutonic evolutionary forces and the Promethean Uranian uh, innovative and you know, uh, uh, an, a new uh, horizons opening up in a, in a, in a potentially more harmonious way. Uh, but so much will depend on how we act right now. Um, the responsibilities are tremendous for us right now. And my country and our, our leadership is, uh, is just pretty much, uh, you know, in a possession state of the, the uh, Prince of Darkness. But um, we, uh, we're, we're hoping uh, some very major changes will be happening in these next few weeks. But it's going to be very volatile with that you know, Mars squaring everything, including going on to Uranus, right, uh, as we uh, leave um, the end of this year and into the next uh, January 2021 and the, and the, the next inauguration. So, um, yeah, it, life is, a, um, is very dramatic right now. I think this is probably the end of our time. So I'll just say, uh, yeah, it's so dramatic. It's so meaningful. Um, I have a trust this is one of the things that astrologers have is this gift of the universe is meaningful. We are grounded in larger meanings and purposes that are visible in the great movements of the cosmos and in the great movements of human history. And that orchestrated correlation between above and below allows us a certain trust in the unfolding of the universe that can give astrologers the unique role of being able to hold a kind of um, center of uh, spiritual orientation in a very, very challenging time. And the human community is going to need it. Need it. It's going to need us. Um, the astrological community can be a kind of heroic community in holding that vision of, of a larger good that can unfold out of this, that comes from a deep trust in the divine cosmos and its, uh, and, and, and its uh, care for us. 
So on that note, um, let me thank you for uh, adding me to your long uh, two days of, of seeing uh, lectures here and, and uh, I hope I pass the audition. <laughs> You never had to do an audition, Rick, never, ever. Um, there's just the most beautiful comments coming through the chat box, so I will send this to you after. They're just lovely. Thank um, you people, so much. People are incredibly moved. Um, yeah, very, very touching. So I shall oh, send that you. to you because it's really beautiful. And I would like I to say appreciate thank you. That. Thank you so, so much. Um, yeah, it's been wonderful. And what a beautiful way to end the conference. So I'm very, very grateful, as is Frank. Um, and I know as is everybody in this class. So thank you so much. People are just you, writing Wendy. profound, mind blowing, wonderful. I really appreciate yeah. you, you letting me know, Wendy. And yeah, that'll be great if you could send it on because I'd love to uh, have that one to one, you know, yeah. kind of. That's the one thing about giving these talks, you know, especially on on the internet is like you're you're kind of delivering it into the uh, cybersphere there. And the it's void. great to be able to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you've had you. about. You've had about 85, 75 to 85 um, in the webinar, um, and there will be at least um, another couple of hundred watching this. So, so it's, yeah, what a beautiful way to end. Um, thank you so much. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, so thanks for all you did, and thanks, Frank, too. Okay. Bye-bye, okay. everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Well, this is the end of the conference, everyone. It's very sad. Everyone's probably very tired and very full. Um, thank you so much to everybody, um, all the staff um, that work, the Zoomers, the customer services, the speakers who were just, just did such a fantastic job. Um, it was really great. And thank you to all of you. It was a really well uh, facilitated conference. Um, no one was out of order, never had to turn anything, you know, it was great. No Zoom hackers, no Zoom bombers. So it was a real pleasure to facilitate for the last couple of days. Um, so thank you all for joining in. Just to say that um, all of Saturday's recordings are up on the website, so you can watch those. Um, and you've got and tomorrow. The, today's ones will be up um, tomorrow. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the weekend. And what Rick just gave us the most beautiful thoughts to um, leave with. So. I'm going to close this room down now, everyone, um, and um, have a wonderful evening, daytime, um, and we hope to see you all again soon. Thanks, everybody.